Well, I want to thank everybody for waiting for this video because I know it's been a couple of months since I've been producing content and that's because I've been moving into a new house. So everything's been a little bit crazy, but I appreciate you being here. And from now on, we're going to have regular content every couple weeks. So for those of you who watch my channel, you know that the Acaso Brave 7 was one of the standout cameras for me last year. Now, budget action cameras are sort of hit and miss, and I've really had pretty much a negative experience with most that I've tried. But the Acaso Brave 7 actually did impress me. Well, today I've got the Brave 8, the successor to that, and we're going to see if this camera can stand up to the standard set by the Acaso Brave 7 and find out what improvements it might have. So stick around. Straight out of the box, you can tell that Acaso has put some work into the new Brave 8. The build quality and attention to detail is an obvious incremental step up from the Brave 7. The body itself feels more substantial and the subtle changes to texture improve grip and make it easier to navigate by touch. With a fully waterproof exterior which can dive up to 33 feet, it's clear that Acaso was ready to go head to head with top tier action cameras in the segment. Unlike the Brave 4 Elite, which I recently reviewed, this Brave 8 sports a removable battery, and you get two in the box, as well as watertight compartments, which are a welcome addition for me as I really didn't like being confined to the one built-in battery on the last camera I tried. Acaso claims improved sound via the onboard mics and tons of new features including a new super smooth stabilization, face detection, multiple angles from narrow to super wide, and a portrait perspective as well. The Brave 8 features an improved lens, which Acaso claims gives us better detail using a unique 9-layer array of glass. Of course, we're going to be putting all of that to the test, but even the website feels like a step into a more premium experience, and I, for one, am excited to see if it's true. Now, just so you know, we are not going to make any adjustments to this camera for the entire time that I'm filming, so everything that you're watching is all in automatic settings. I'm not going to make any adjustments to ISO or anything like that. Can we clean it up? Can it be better? Probably. But I want to use this like most average people will, which means you turn it on, you point, and you shoot. The other thing is we're going to be using the onboard microphones, and I have wind reduction turned off. And it's pretty windy right now. I will tell you that whatever you're hearing right now is what this camera would sound like with no adjustments made to it with a pretty windy day. It's windy enough that I'm feeling it right now. Okay, before we get rolling, I need to talk to you about stabilization because when I started filming, I screwed up. This isn't Acaso's fault, this is mine. You see, I'm the sort of person who never reads directions. I mean, if I put furniture together, I have tons of extra parts, every time. In fact, I've got one chair on the patio that I think, for insurance reasons, I can't allow anyone to sit in. So, when given the choice between normal stabilization and super smooth, I chose super smooth and filmed all day. The problem is that as far as I can see, the processing for Super Smooth is done on the Acaso app and not in camera. So when I first looked at the footage, it looked like this. Terrible, right? Well, what you need to do is upload the footage to the app and then process it on the app and download the footage to your phone and then move it to your computer from the phone. And frankly, I don't have uh, any patience for that. Now, don't get me wrong, it works and it looks great. But for normal use, I'd suggest staying on normal stabilization and saving Super Smooth for only the roughest terrain. Acaso does a great job with stabilization and I don't think you'll be disappointed with the normal results at all. It's time to talk about what most of you are here for and that is image quality. All of you can make your own decisions, but for me I think there's no question that this camera is a solid step up from the Brave 7 and the first budget action camera that I've used, which is a legitimate competitor when its $289 price tag is taken into consideration against GoPro and DJI. Now at $289, does it still count as a budget action camera? Well, that's for you to decide. Shadow detail is impressive and I think color is natural and most importantly skin tones look fantastic. Also, if you haven't already noticed from the content earlier in the video, the microphones are very good and clear. The picture is sharp and detailed, and what also impressed me is that the white balance and exposure is very well disciplined. No matter what I threw at the Brave 8, it always seemed to hold its composure without wildly hunting for the right settings. 
I suppose you can find moments of blown out highlights, but it was never anything that ruined the shot for me. All of this footage was shot on automatic settings at 4K 60 frames per second, and like usual, I slowed it down to 50% just to give it a nice flow. All right, so I'm driving right now, handheld, got shadows everywhere, so it's kind of low light and direct sunlight, a lot of challenge for the camera. But if you wanna see what it looks like with stabilization on, this is what it looks like. We're in a 2500 truck, so it's not exactly the smoothest thing to drive in the world. Um, and I'm on back roads. This is what it looks like with stabilization on. Now, for this entire video, for the most part, I'm going to keep stabilization on because I think that's what most people are going to do. But right now, the camera is handheld and we're on a bumpy back road in a truck. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but let me know what you think. Okay, it's time to sum things up and let's talk about the onboard mics one more time. The audio quality on this device is outstanding. Everything that you're hearing on camera is coming straight out of the onboard mics. This is very rare because most of the action cameras that I review do not have very good audio quality. And I would say also even GoPro isn't that great. I use the DJI Action 3 specifically because I think the onboard mics on that device are really, really good. After several days of shooting with the Acaso Brave 8, I can confidently say that I'm happy with the results. I do have a bit of a caveat to what I said earlier regarding stabilization. In the footage that you're looking at now, I'm using normal stabilization, and after comparing the two, I think I might keep it on super smooth in more cases than I thought. Yes, it takes a bit longer to process, but there is a noticeable difference, and super smooth really works well. While the Vivid color profile does improve colors, I think it makes skin tones noticeably red and I would use that only for scenery, not for vlogging or other cases where you have people on camera. Still photos are solid and though I wouldn't reach for it over my phone, there are plenty of times you don't want two devices with you, especially if you're using the action camera for sports and you want to leave your $1,200 phone safely at home. I want to thank all of you for watching and I'll have some comparison videos with the Brave 8 as well as other new releases from GoPro and DJI in the coming weeks. Also, for those of you interested in the new Pixel 8 Pro from Google, I'll have that soon and I plan on at least three videos covering that device in depth. Thanks for joining me and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from He Has the Camera on YouTube.